When I resigned, uh, retired as director, uh, chairman of the Havel Citizens Hall of Fame, I recommended that Bob, Bob Gilman be the new chairman, which he is now. He's done wonders with establishing the history of Havel and the people in Havel. And the history, like people, if I may mention a few names, people say that MacArthur was a great hero. General Marshall, who was the chief of staff at the time, uh, MacArthur was there, said he was the most incompetent officer of the Yami ever had. Mm. And I'll back that up. I was in the invasion of the Philippines, I was in the invasion of Okinawa, I was in the invasion of Casablanca. I went through all the baloney. But MacArthur let, he was notified when they bombed Pearl Harbor, nine hours before, after they bombed Pearl Harbor, he sat, he was notified right away that they were under war with China, uh, Japan, and he never did a lift of the finger. And the reason I know this is Colonel McCarthy from Haverhill, Mass, set up the plans for the defense of the Philippines in 1937. They wanted him to bronze star. Oh, son of a gun. Oh. And he never put the program into effect. Then he left Stilwell, Vinegar Joe Stilwell, holding the bag, which wasn't necessary, but Stilwell was a better general but he was going to show MacArthur up, so he had him, yeah. you surrender, yeah. you know, and did things like that. Ah, but the, and the beauty of it is, like, the reason you don't really mention I was at the Philippines. We went to Okinawa, we went alone. He had all the Air Force planes flying over his house protected. We had a fight, and we lost more men and more ships the United States Navy lost in Okinawa than all the wars that the United States has been in since the birth of the nation. Mm. That one battle. Uh -huh. Total more of them, including World War II, because we didn't get the proper protection. But the thing I mention it is, it was set up by a man from Haverhill, Colonel McCarthy. We have Louis B. Mayer that sold his theaters to Bill Miller. You've probably heard of Bill. Oh, he's on the. Yeah. Uh, his father bought the movie theater, and he has a pitch at some place, and his family is a film of Louis B. Mayer gave him the keys to Bill Miller's father and driving off to Hollywood, uh, California, rather, then they established California there. <clears throat> then you have General Brickett, who was a doctor when the revolution started. So they decided to go to Lexington when the battle started, and they marched to Lexington. Now, the Lexington battle, a lot of people don't realize, it lasted 10 minutes. Imagine walking to Lexington. Mm -hmm. The battle was over two days by oh, the time they yeah, got there. Yeah, yeah. So, and this is true. They decided, well, let's go into Boston as long as we're here. So they went into Boston, and 27 of the members got drunk <laughs> and put in jail. So they had to stay and wait for them to get back. And I'm going to tell you a little antidote about that. So then, after they waited and they got them out and they released, there's a battle going on in Breeds Hill in Charleston. Let's go over. And they get over there, and New Hampshire contingent was fighting them, and they were running. Yeah backing up and Brickett stopped and drove him back up the hill and fought him to a standstill, so nobody won. But one of the things I like about General Brickett, that at Valley Forge, anybody from Havel, from his contingent, got blankets, coats, and everything. He spent his entire fortune clothing and feeding his men at Valley Forge. He was the presiding officer of the court martial of Benedict Arnold. This is our general, you know, Brickett's Hill in the country right, club, right, right, that's right. General Brickett. But then the Congress got a little upset over Massachusetts, so Brickett never got paid back all the money he expended. In the same way as they did not only to Brickett, to ha uh, Morris, Robert Morris, the financier of the Revolution, yeah. never paid him because he was Jewish. Oh, geez. Never get a dime, and they're still petitioning to this day to get the money, but cost it's too late. Yeah. If they try to pay one tenth or one one hundredth of what is owed more of Morris, it would bankrupt, hmm. could bankrupt the world in the interest alone. But these are the things mm -hmm. you can go through the arts, and the Frankie Fontaine, the, the I can't think of them all right now, but all in the Hall of Fame in the library, you can see the posters right, up there. Right. And Frank Leahy, the Leahy Clinic, right. born in Havel, brought up in Havel, yeah. And you can, any subject you want to go, you want to sit down and talk with anybody, the military. Don Atwood, and Don Atwood, when he died, he was the last, just before he died, the year, two years before, he was a guest speaker at the Hall of Fame induction. Then he died, Deputy Secretary of Defense. 
and we put him in the Hall of Fame when he died, and we had Chinry come in, the Secretary of Defense, as a guest speaker. And he told him that the Gulf War, for the first time in the history of the United States, were involved in any action with allies. It was the first time that they ever got paid by every single one of their allies for their cost. And he says, and it was only because of Donald Atwood. Then I met the colonel who was in charge of the Pentagon at the wake, and he was telling me, telling him he had no reason to tell me other than this, that he had talked to generals and he talked to privates in the Pentagon who had been there for years. Mm -hmm. And it was fully confirmed that Donald Atwood of Haverhill was the finest gentleman that there was ever in mm. charge of the Pentagon. He said they had more respect for that man than anybody that's ever served him before or since. So then I turned around and I had, right around City Hall, that square, Summer, Main, and Winter Street, called, changed to Atwood Square. Now Atwood Square, there's City Hall, there's a library, there's a Armenian church that Atwood's father-in-law established. Then right across the street is Hannah Dustin's statue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hannah Dustin is the, Donna Atwood is the direct descendant of Hannah Dustin. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So they got the whole family right there. Oh, yeah. But it's so wonderful when you stop and take time to look at the city of Havel, to see that what we have and what we've had in the past, we have in the future, we can have in the future, if we get together as a teamwork, not just the library, not just City Hall, or not just the mayor or the city council, but they work together as a team.